a good and this this is not as good as it gets. I promise. Why not? It gets a little it gets a little better. It gets better when you're celebrating. When you win. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. <laughs> you're hoisting the, the trophy over your head. It is fun to be a part of this though. It's easy to lose sight you of that. This, it's you? easy to lose sight of that. <laughs> you dig this. I had to laugh and I wrote about it this week and if my phone ever works I'll get going. Um I don't need to use this right now. I think they just try to remind me in case I need to do something stupid, <laughs> which I didn't. So, which I, I can't remember a time in your career which you have. Yeah, I have. I try not. To. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, I try not to. I mean, I try to just you know. I mean, I don't know if I even try not to. It's just I don't. Like I just I, I guess I'm programmed that way. I always have been since I started racing, and my dad taught me that. I had to respect my equipment, and I was the one working on it. You know just the way it's always been so yeah aren't you grateful that you're in your position this week though <laughs> and not denny's i mean you know you don't have any there's no shit <clears throat> stirring that has gone on with the 19 <laughs> and anybody else but you know he's he's brought down the rash of chase elliott fans he's brought down the rash of bowman fans i mean it's him against the world and you just have to go out and do one job on sunday yeah i mean i i, I guess try to focus on uh you know what really matters and luckily i haven't been in any any uh confrontations here lately so it's always good to not have enemies when it comes down to a race like this and uh you know not that it's not that they'll come into play i mean i don't i don't see anybody uh doing anything you know out of control this weekend i think everybody understands that it's the championship race it's you know the final four and you know i don't think anyone doing anything silly but i guess you just um less enemies makes it a little bit easier if you get back in traffic or something that guys will you'll show you a little bit more respect i would say and the one thing that you said when I walked up is, this is fun for you. This is <clears> actually, I mean, I'd love to have the four of you guys <laughs> up there trash talking. You know, that's fun for us, but yeah. this is fun for you. To yeah. Be in this spot, I mean, my gosh, for the last six years, isn't it? I think it's my fifth time. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's been, uh, wish we could have won a few more of them. And we've been close. So just, you know, honestly, uh, feel lucky you'd have the chance, have, have another opportunity, another championship. And, um, you know, excited to be here at Phoenix, and you know we um, we got a lot of confidence. Winning here in the spring really, uh, you know, makes us feel good about this weekend. Hopefully, we can do what it takes, and hopefully, we got what it takes when we show up. Uh, you know, tomorrow for practice, and um, it's going to be interesting having practice and qualifying again for sure. I mean, that's uh, <clears throat> I don't think any of us any of us remember how to qualify, so uh, that'll be interesting. It's like, yeah, hey, you get two laps, and you know, go out there and, and drop the hammer and see what happens. So. It should be uh it should be a fun weekend and uh, just you know like I said thankful to be part of it thankful for a great team and a great season and uh, hopefully we can get it done this weekend. You come in here, you've been a champion before, so you know what that pressure's like. But she kind of touched on a little bit. You know, there's some other stuff going on in politics. And nah, stuff. I don't know about none of, none of that. But, but with you, you're kind of like <laughs> under the radar. You just kind of come in here and you can you can focus on one thing and that's winning the championship. Does that make it easier? Do you, do you, have you been reflected on that? Yeah, I mean, I guess it's just – I think it's easier f for me to, you know, deal with it that way. Um, I don't really – hadn't really, I guess, been in any other positions before to understand that. But, um, you know, understanding what this weekend is, what it's what it's all about, how big it really is, and um, how to kind of control everything around you and um, focus on what matters. So, look, excited to get in the car tomorrow and see what we have and go to work. No one's mad at you. Nobody's mad at me that I know of. I mean, <laughs> they could be. I could have pissed somebody off along the way a couple of times. I don't know. You just you never know around here. So uh, I think everything's okay, though. <laughs> Good luck this weekend. Thank you. What are your thoughts on having a media day like this again? I mean, we haven't done these in a couple of years. It seems like. Yeah, it's good. I mean, I I, I honestly uh, I think the longer you do this, the more you're around the sport, the more you enjoy these things, and you understand that this is uh, you know a big part of what we do and. Uh, it's always nice to see all you guys, you know, familiar faces and, um, you know, people that help, you know, take our sport to, you know, the masses and to all the people and help them understand how we do things, what we do. And uh, we, just, we appreciate everybody, and it's good to, uh, good to be able to do this stuff again. Why does the, how, does, how does qualifying in your starting spot matter? I mean, look, you saw Chase start at the back last year in this race and, and yeah. win. So, I mean, you can come up through the back, and you guys just should be the, among the best cars. 
Yeah, I don't, you know, at the end of the day, to answer your question, I don't know that it really matters. You know, it's it has nothing to do with pit selection this weekend, which is different than normal. So um, I think more than anything, it's just it's, a, you know, kick the weekend off right. It's kind of like a, a warning shot. Like, you know, we have the best car. It's kind of like a confidence thing. Uh, you know, you want to win everything, right, as a team. You want to win practice. You want to win qualifying. You want to win a race on any given weekend. But this weekend, it's bigger than normal. Um, and it's kind of like that first shot of, okay, you know, we're, we're the best car. We, we've laid down the gauntlet. What are you going to do about it? You know, so um, that part of it's fun. And, and does it really matter? Probably not. But it's, uh, you know, it's, it's fun to be able to do that. And, and then, um, you know, obviously you, you don't risk having to start back in traffic if you do qualify bad and maybe getting in somebody's mess. How much do you, you know, not having <clears throat> Well, I think how it. Do you, how do you handle it when you're not gone? When you're yeah. Else is gone? Um, you know, it's it's tough, but it's always nice to have a gauge before the race. You know, these days we show up, we don't know what we have. We just go race, right? And at the end of the day, you're like, okay, this is what we had. It wasn't good enough. We need to work on this. We work on that for next week. You never had a chance to recover if you were off, whether it was a bad decision or maybe your car just wasn't fast enough, you know. But usually it's it comes down to at this at this level with you know, the level of team that I have, we have great cars, great equipment, great people. It usually comes down to decisions. You know, maybe we didn't bring the right setup or we went too aggressive on this or not as enough, ag enough aggressive in this area. So I think for us this weekend, it just gives us all a chance that if we do make a bad decision or, you know, get too aggressive or not aggressive enough, we can, we can react and try to give our team the best, op you know, opportunity possible to go out there and, and win the race. So it'll be more heads up this way, I think. It'll be more uh, in the team's hands um, because we do get to work on the cars and we do get to you know, take some chances on the setup and try some things and try to find some speed. When you talk about decisions, um, you know, one race only type of event for a championship, obviously so many things can happen. Obviously you guys got you know, burned a few years ago with the, the pit stop and the tires and things like that. How do you – there's so many things that can happen. <laughs> how, 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 how do you <coughs> forget about that? Yeah. Because it could, you know, it happened to Denny a couple of years ago with the mm -hmm. on the front. Is that it? There's so much that one one decision can make an impact in a lot of ways. Well, that's every week. You know, that's racing in general. I mean, I always tell people you need a million things to go right to win a race. Just one race, a million things. One of those goes wrong, you're probably not going to win, or there's a good chance you won't win. So. We deal with that on you know on a regular basis, but as as it comes down to the championship, to your point, you don't get to do this every year. You know, there's no guarantee that you know anybody's ever going to win a championship, let alone have the opportunity. So they definitely mean more. They hurt more when they're in this situation. When it's you know like last year, we didn't get to come back and try to you know fix what we did in 2019 with the tire issues. So um, I think you just you relish the opportunity. You really understand the, what the opportunity is about. Um, and, and it's really a game of the odds, I think. The, the more times you're in this, you know, the better chance you have of winning one of them. Um, for us, the last two we've, we've been in, we finished second and probably had the best car. So maybe the odds are in our favor here to get our second one. Let's hope. <laughs> Every race is – you always got to not, you know, not beating yourself. You, the competition with, you know, as good as the competition is, you can't make mistakes. So that's always a big part of it. Um, you know, Phoenix will be no different. It is a short race, absolutely, yeah. Hard to overcome problems, but um, if you have something happen, hopefully it happens early. And, you know, in the spring race here, we had to fix some damage, and uh, at the end of stage one, we were able to come through the field. So you can do it here. The track's gotten racy the last couple of years, and um, you can make it up, but it better happen early. You joked a while ago about going out and forgetting about how to qualify. That. What, what's your prediction on over-under as far as people looping it around going out there? Because we haven't done this in a while. Uh, I don't I don't see anybody looping it around. I think it's just it's a matter of, uh, you know, qualifying. You're always, you know, you're always at 101%. And uh, you got to get it get it all. You're always pushing super hard. And, and hitting your marks at Phoenix is always a little bit a little bit tricky, especially with the sun going into turn three. So uh, it'll just be fun to kind of feel that energy again of that excitement and the nerves of going out, getting, strapping in, and, 
you know, going, uh, laying it, trying to lay one down a hot, a hot lap. When you won here, did you feel like you could back into the position? I didn't know. I didn't know. Uh, as good as my car was that day, I was hoping. You know, I, 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 I told somebody last week before the race, or a few people, I think, in my media stuff, that we we really, all summer, we're, we're looking forward to Martinsville, Phoenix. Like, all summer, we're like, we just got to get there. We just got to get there. And, you know, we made it. So, uh, here we are. We'll see what we can do with it. I, I feel good. Well, you said a couple of weeks ago, if we get to Phoenix, watch out. <laughs> Is that your prediction? Yeah, I mean, we're here. So, I, I feel really, really good. Um, but we'll see. You know, it's um, that was a long time ago car wise and team wise and you know the roles and what we've what we have now i don't know you know where we stack up against the hendrick cars honestly they've been really really strong so uh we'll see but you know our car was crazy just the way it felt in, in the spring was amazing and, and i'm hoping we can get that feel with uh with even more speed this weekend ever since this series the championship final four the, the, the winner came from the final four the winner of the race you don't have to win this race oh yeah yeah no no question I mean, honestly, I, I feel like, you know, what you just said, you look at it every year, the, the winner, you know, comes from the final four guys. So, I mean, I think you have to win it to win it. After winning in the spring, do you consider yourself the favorite? I don't think you can really pick a favorite. I mean, it's, yeah, it's so hard to hard to pick. I, I've been in this situation before, and I think, you know, it's 2017 we were probably the favorite because we won the most races, and, but still, even then, it was uh, it came down the last 30 laps of us getting the lead on pit road and winning. So, I mean, it's it's too hard to pick a favorite in one race deal. Do you like having that added pressure to a full three-day weekend versus just the single-day race? Yeah, I don't mind it. I mean, I think it's it's fun. Um, you know, the biggest thing that, that I think we all miss about the old schedule is spending time with our team, you know, in the hall or with our guys and really, you know, getting in there and going to work with them and being a part of the the process throughout the weekend um that's something that as a driver is so special it's so fun and uh, i've really missed that for the last two years you know it's it's really been you know been a missing piece of the uh, of the racing fun for me so i'm excited about that spend some time with the guys in the garage and you know cutting up having fun and, and really just getting down to the nuts and bolts and working with them and uh, getting the car better you mentioned you know we said if you've been here before you, you have a couple of runner-up finishes <clears throat> Um, really, honestly, both 18 and 19. I mean, 18, we were a dominant car, and we had to race one, and, you know, a late caution, and, you know, we'd get beat because we it took us eight or ten laps to get going. So, I mean, it was like the worst-case scenario with to get beat with the best car. And in 2019, we kind of beat ourselves, which hurt. But uh, I felt like both years hurt equally bad because we had the best car, and we were in position leading. We led most of the race in both of them, and, you know, it just uh, it didn't play out the way we needed it to. So they both stung a lot. Um, 2015 was just kind of like, you know, we didn't even know what we were doing. We were just like, how did we do this? How did we even get here? And, um, and you know, so f we finished fourth, but we didn't have high expectations. So I think, you know, we weren't uh, we weren't even really on, on our own radar at that point. coming down to a battle of the two big teams. Has there been any discussion of a split strategy or anything to try and get the – JGR the win? No, not at all. I think we're both uh, both for teams are out to try to do the best we can for you know for our individual you know teams and sponsors, and we'll do it you know whatever we need to do to uh, make that happen. So the coach has basically said, uh, "Boys, go out there and." Yeah, yeah. He would never he would never put us in a position to say you know we're going to give you each a fifty fifty shot. There's you know that's not an option. Right. Do you, do you like being kind of the underdog on this one? Is it? I don't think we are. Different? I mean, I really. Well, I'm don't. Sure you don't. I really don't. I mean, I don't know. Do you? I mean, no, I don't. <laughs> I, I feel. The numbers, I'd rather be in your position. I feel good about where we're at. I don't know the numbers. I don't really have an you know opinion on a favorite or anything. I just I feel really good. I'm excited, and uh, I think we can get it done. So let's uh, let's see what happens. It seems been like this week he's been pretty calm and relaxed. You know, he's been yeah. Guy, so. He's been yeah. He's been calm, relaxed. He's got a plan, and uh, I feel you know good about what we're doing and. I think, uh, yeah, I think he's ready. Yeah, well, he'll do. He'll do a great job. Same car you guys had back in the spring. The I don't think so, but I don't know. I didn't even ask. I don't ask about cars anymore because they're all so. They're always the same. Yeah. They always bring their best one, and that's always the best one. Like it's guaranteed. It's not like back in the day you had your favorite car and every other car felt different. You know, today they're so good at building them. It's just 
the better one is always the newer one. So whatever they think is the best, I'll be happy to drive. Because then you know what you don't name your cars. Exactly. Yeah, because these days, literally, we don't even know what car it is. You know, I mean, we don't even look at that number on them anymore. It's it's crazy. One of the unique things about the weekend is practice qualifying. Is that a good thing for you guys? Because I know sometimes in practice you can be kind of lost a little bit, but you kind of sit there and you kind of work on it. Yeah, I talked about that a little earlier. I think, um, no, it's fine. I, I, I think it's good. I mean, I, I'm excited about it. I, I, I miss it, you know, missing hanging out with the guys, spending more time with them and really, you know, kind of getting in depth on getting the car right and what we think the track's going to do and all that kind of stuff. So qualifying is going to be fun. We haven't done that in a while. And, um, you know, at the end of the day, I think it's it probably makes it a little more heads up you know, for all four of us to race against each other, being that we have an opportunity to see what we have and, and make some adjustments on that. Um, you know, cause you never know. Sometimes you just, sometimes you go with a gut instinct and, and it doesn't work. And then sometimes you go with a gut instinct and you kick everybody's ass. <laughs> so, you know what I mean? It's at least we have a little bit of a, uh, you know, a sanity check on the car as far as that goes. Think about what a second championship would do for your legacy. I mean, I mean, I've heard Brad talk before how you know a lot of guys want to oh, guys want championships. That's a big thing. But winning a second one kind of validates the first one and really kind of elevates your career. I didn't know if you ever think about yeah, it or not. I haven't thought about it honestly. I mean, I I try not to think about those kind of things. Um, whether it's you know number of wins or what championships mean or what you know what where where your place in the overall sport is. I mean, I. I think it's, those are things you look at when you're done and you can look back and say, man, why did I do that? Or why didn't I do that? You know, so um, I just focused on the weekend and trying to get it done. But two would certainly be amazing. And uh, we've been so close and a couple of heartbreaking years in 18 and 19 we'd like to make up for. Individual title aside, mm-hmm. does the championship sport is split between two teams. Does this feel like the battle of the best teams? Um, I mean, I think it does. I think, you know, across the I feel like we've always throughout the year been looking towards Hendrick to say, hey, those are the guys we got to beat. You know, those those guys are – they've pretty much been the fastest guys on average everywhere we go. And um, so, yeah, I mean, I think we've been right there nipping at their heels. Hopefully uh, this weekend we can beat them. Do you think Hendrick maybe is talked about more this season just because of the total wins and whatnot? And yeah. And can come in and spook them. Um, yeah, I mean, I, they – had a lot of wins they've been fast they've done a great job they've got you know great drivers great teams etc and um you know but final four it's we'll see you know we all got the equal opportunity here so uh phoenix has been a good track 750 tracks have been kind of what we've been our best at this year um uh, not only jgr but the 19 especially and um you know all four of our wins have come on you know with this package and these rules and i enjoy the 750 stuff so uh, i'm fired up and uh excited about this weekend i think we can get it done this weekend, I mean, what, what's been the biggest surprise overall for you this year as far as teams, drivers, or when you look down the line? I think just how competitive it's been across the series. I mean, I think, uh, you know, from what I can remember, the most competitive year just, um, I know, you know, Larson's won a lot of races, but I think across the board, it's every week, you just never really knew know who was going to show up and who was going to show out. And we've seen a lot of guys really competitive that we haven't in the past. And I think we've seen a lot of guys that were, you know, really competitive in the past being consistent you know including us we had a real up and down kind of season a lot of wins but a lot of weird races you know i know i credit that to no practice and a lot of that kind of thing but i just feel like it was really competitive um throughout the field and there was not a lot of room for mistakes and um you know a lot of really fast cars out there uh battling this year was there a driver that underperformed this year that you thought would be much much better um i you know i i have a hard time always just blaming things on drivers these days i've been through a lot and understand you know the sport as a whole it takes a lot more than a good driver to to do things yeah yeah martin uh at the end of the day sunday do you think that having practice and qualifying Mm. this weekend will have played a factor one way or the other in the championship i definitely think it'll play a factor um i don't know that you know if you could have a crystal ball that you'd say the practice is going to change who wins the race i don't know if you could say that but i think it's um it's going to change it up i think it's going to make it more competitive i do feel like that and i feel like it it really removes the opportunity for somebody to just really completely step on their own toes and um, really make a mistake bad or bad decision that hurts them so i think it'll be i mean i honestly think it's a it's a more fair competition for four guys to all have practice and go out there and lay it on the line and see who can do the best job I do. I think that's always, 
that had always been our strong point. Um, you know, we would always, I can remember, I don't know how many races we won where we were unloaded in practice. We were absolutely god awful, like just terrible. It's like, guys, we're way off. Let's go to work. And we ended up winning the race. And that happened a lot of times. And there was a lot of times, even after practice on Saturday, we would wholesale the thing and go out and win. You know, so I have a lot of confidence in my team when it comes down to that. And usually if we can get some good laps in practice and, um, you know, get a good feel for the car and give that information and start to work on it, we can uh, we can make some stuff happen. It's been really good, honestly. I, I don't know that we'd ever lost confidence. I know we... We uh, we made a few mistakes along the way, and we got you know aggressive on some things, and and you know maybe just beat ourselves a few times. But um, I think through it all, we've stayed confident, stayed aggressive, and um, you know the team's done a good job. They've they've had fun this year, I feel like, and they're they've been excited, and they've really really worked hard, and they always go to the extra mile, which is I think part of the reason why we're here. Um, they're not they're never shy uh, about putting in extra work and staying late and doing more than you know, more than they really have to, um, to try to get an edge. And, you know, I'm a lucky guy to get to drive cars, uh, that, that my guys build. You and Chase are the only two in this fight who have been in a championship, in a position to win the championship and have achieved that and have completed that goal. Um, what does that do for your team's preparation coming in here? I know there's a lot of reps that you've had, but, um, what does that do knowing that you've been able to, to go into a race with everything on the line and achieve that already? Yeah, I mean, you know, I think it's just confidence at the end of the day, and it's it's understanding. You know, we've been in this Final Four, I guess our fifth time now. So not only me, but James, some guys on our team, you understand the big picture and, you know, kind of how to control the moment and not let it overtake your emotions and, you know, make decisions just out of, you know, because you're going crazy and, and you are you don't know how to know. <laughs> you know, the moment's too big for you, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So, I mean, just we know how to do that and, and you know, keep under control and understand the situation and make good decisions. So, uh, I think at the end of the day, that's important. And having that uh, having that one under your belt certainly gives you confidence. Is there any one of the other three competitors that you feel is your, your biggest competition? Is there any one that you're looking at? I mean, honestly, I feel like, I feel like they're all – potential competition it just depends really on you know who who hits it right and who can make the best decisions for their race car and sunday and you know it's going to come down to pit stops and strategy and uh, track position all those things that come into play normally but i really don't know that one sticks out other than you know like i mentioned earlier the hendrick cars have been really fast but um, at the 750 tracks we've been really fast so i feel like it's going to be a really really strong competition and uh really close really tough one Well, we won, so. Um, I know you won, but I'm curious. But sometimes, even when you win, you don't have the best car. Did you feel we definitely had the best car, no question. And um, you know, we we had to pit for some damage at the end of stage one, and drove all the way through the field to second in stage two, and then you know, took the lead in, in stage three, and never looked back. And then we had a little bit of issue on a restart, and lost. You know, fell back to fifth or something, and drove our way back to the front again. So, I definitely felt like we had the best car, but that doesn't guarantee anything. To answer your question. Um, you know, we need to make sure we hit it right, and, and obviously it's um, – that was a while ago. Things have changed, you know, rules, tech procedures, et cetera. Things will be a little bit different. Um, certainly the weather is going to be different. It's going to be hotter out here than it was then as well. So um, no PJ1, uh, just spraying resin, I think, today, and then not again all week. So the track's going to be different, and you gotta you got to go out there and practice and, and do what you always do, and that is, uh, you know, use your, your best guess, intuition, and your feel, and – your gut and engineering and all those things that go into it, put it all together and hopefully mash it all together and come out with a winning car on Sunday. So if you have a car, if the, if the car feels as good as it did in the spring, you're going to be set for the year. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that was the best car I've ever had here in my whole career. I've been coming here since uh, in 2004. So um, car felt really good. It did a lot of really good things. Um, and if we can make that happen again and have hopefully have even more speed, uh, we're going to be tough to handle. No, I don't think so, but I don't even know. I was telling somebody earlier, I don't know. Like, you don't even look at that anymore. 
that the newest car is always the best car. It's not like the back in the day when we had our favorites. They all felt different. You know, they'd build a couple cars and you'd be like, ah, that one still feels the best. So they, you keep running it. Nowadays, the newest one is usually the best one. Is anybody building new car lately? I mean, do you have any ideas if you guys have built new cars even with the next gen coming? We've built new cars, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, they don't mess around when it comes to – if they think there's something better, they're going to they're gonna make it. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Not me. <laughs> I just don't want any. I just I don't care to have any of that. So it's. What do you thrive off? A quiet week of fishing and just hanging out. Ah, yeah. I mean, just having fun, enjoying life. You know, doing what I love to do and getting to do this as well. I mean, this is racing is amazing. It's awesome. It's a the best job in the world. So, um, yeah, I just enjoy doing the things I love to do, and I'm lucky to get to do them. With Reston being a key contributor to the track, how do you feel, feel about running it compared to the DJ one, especially at track like Phoenix? You know, honestly, it seemed like so far the, the where we've used the resin, it's not been much different than PJ1. It's a little bit, uh, I would call a little bit less treacherous, a um, little bit less sensitive to, you know, temperature and things. You know, PJ1, it seemed like we always would start the race and it would be like super slippery for a couple laps and then it would come in and then it would get like super gripped up and it was just, it changed a lot, you know, throughout the day. Um, it seems like the resin is just a little more consistent. And, and for whatever reason so far, it hasn't even seemed to wear off as bad, which is interesting. Um, just more consistent, I think, which is a good thing. And with the confidence that you've had pretty much all season, despite that long stretch of what I'm winning, do you embrace coming into the championship for being essentially the dark horse compared to the other three that have been able to win as of late? Um, yeah, I mean, I don't see how we're the dark horse by any means, but um, I'm – I feel great about our opportunity and, you know, winning here in the spring and, uh, you know, 750 tracks have been where we've been strong this year. And so here we are. Not a dark horse, but Wally said earlier this week that Joe Gibbs Racing is the underdog compared to going up against him. Do you agree with that? I don't know. I mean, uh, it's just being here in Phoenix, I don't agree with that. You know, I think this is our kind of racetrack, you know. Um but we'll see. You know, they've won more races. Um, you know, Larson obviously has won more. But the Nine hasn't won an oval all year. I mean, he's only won a road courses. So, um, I, I don't. I definitely don't think we're underdogs. What's the respect level between the four of you? Last week you all talked about how deserving everybody was to be here. But you four drivers, what relationship, what respect level is there? A uh, high level of respect from me towards all those guys. You know, Chase has been a champion already, even as, as young as he is. And, um, you know, Larson, amazing driver, obviously, what he's done this season. Um, and then Denny's, you know, I've raced with him since 2003. Um, I've run a lot of laps with these guys, never had any issues, race very clean. So, I mean, from my standpoint, the way I gauge and judge my respect for them is how, how do they race on the racetrack? What are they capable of? And, you know, honestly, three of the best guys out there to be racing with and three of the best guys out there that you have to beat on a weekly basis, let alone, you know, for a, for a final race, uh, you know, heads up. With this being your first experience racing for a championship here in Phoenix, I'm curious if there's anything different about preparing for this year's championship race that you may have had in previous championship experiences when you were racing for a title at Homestead. Yeah, I think, you know, obviously um, the tracks just being so, so different is really the only difference in, in the preparation here. You know, how you approach this place is, is so different. And so, uh, you know, that's really it. Aside from that, the same working with the team and talking with them and having a game plan and you know trying to figure out how to how to work through practice and and how to how to qualify again. We haven't done it in a long time, so it's going to be a lot of fun this weekend. What are some of those differences that you mentioned? Just the track, you know how you how you approach it. Homestead's super super fast, uh, but super high tire wear. So you're always kind of in a compromise there of you know how fast can we make the car take off to how much is it going to fall off as far as where you want the balance and how you want it to drive and things like that. And, you know, here tires aren't really a big deal. They do fall off some, especially, you know, here lately. But, um, you know, you got to be able to take off fast here and, and hopefully just make it hang on enough to stay with the field. How much of a number will you guys put on qualifying for Minnesota? Well, we want to qualify well, obviously. Um, it's not a big deal, I don't think, if you do. But, you know, you don't want to start your weekend off that way and you want to be fast, you know. If, you want to be fast. You want to be confident in what you're doing and your decisions and and um, and then driving the car as well. So um, more than anything, I think it's going to be fun to do it again. And, um, yeah, at the end of the day, I don't think it's going to 
Like you can qualify bad and still win it. I promise you. <laughs> No, it's us versus them three. I mean, every year in the championship, it's, you know, obviously we want Joe Gibbs Racing to win it, but our focus is not on the 11 car. Our focus is on us. So, um, yeah, it's it's one, every man for himself. What do you think gives you the biggest advantage in, in winning? Like, why do you think you're going to win? Well, I've won here in the spring, and I've won a championship before. So those are two things in my favor. Are you guys going to share data with the 11 all weekend long? As far as I know, I mean, yeah, just, yeah, as far as I know, it'll be business as usual till the race starts. And then it's, you know, like every weekend, we work together all weekend and the race starts and we go race each other. You know, 2017 was such an emotional championship and you guys set in destiny to be yours. <laughs> how did you compare going into championship week this week, you know, and, and, and how different things must be since then? Yeah, I mean, I felt like, the weight of the world was on our shoulders in 17 just because we had the best car all year long. We were the best team all year long. We won the most races. We led the most laps. We were basically in the position Larson's in right now. Um, and we hadn't won a championship. So we were like, if we don't, if we don't win this, you know, we, we really screwed up because we should win this. We, you know, we were the team to beat. Um, that's always an interesting position to be in. So I guess if you feel like if you didn't win it, you, you were a failure. And this weekend, um, you know, it's like we definitely are excited to be here. We know we have a great shot at it, um, but we don't have the weight of the world on our shoulders. We've done this before. We've been here before. We understand what it takes. And honestly, we're enjoying it. We're having fun, and we're looking forward to going out there and doing the best job we can this weekend um, and just going out there and winning it. Do you like being in this position versus where Larson is at right now? Um, I mean, being in – in the final four in any of the years, I feel like it's always, for me, it's always felt great. Like even 2015 when we had no expectations and, um, or, you know, 2019 when we had a, a decent year, um, but felt like we could win Homestead. So I don't know. I mean, it's just good to be here. Honestly, it's, it's hard to compare them all, but definitely don't feel like the weight of the world's on our shoulders. That's for sure. Uh, it'll be huge. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's, um, it's crazy to think about. And I was actually thinking about that very thing this week that, you know, it, how cool would it be to win the championship and get to have the car, like the last gen six car that ever won a race, you know? Uh, but to the fact that these things are all built by hand and literally every single piece of our car is built at JGR, except for the engine is, um, is pretty special. And a lot of special people there working on them. It'd be awesome to, uh, be able to bring the win home for all those guys that, um, have to change what they're doing next year. You know, a lot of them changing jobs even. Uh, some of them even losing their job, unfortunately. So uh, it'd be awesome to win it for all those those men and women that build these things. How do you compare the championship environment here in Phoenix to that of Homestead, Miami? You know, um, I don't know that it's a whole lot different. I feel like as, as different as the racetracks are, um, they still race kind of similar, right? Like – like Phoenix here, we're starting to get some tire wear. We get some long runs. The field gets kind of separated. And then if you get a caution, you have a restart. And the restarts here are pretty crazy with the dog leg on the back straightaway, just like a mile and a half. You know, um, you get three, four, five wide, just like a mile and a half. And it's like, okay, you know, we're at a mile track. This is nuts. So kind of similar, really. As different as they are, they kind of race somewhat similar in that in that regard as far as, like, just excitement level and, and just, you know, in your head, like, it's not a laid back race by any means. It's pretty it's pretty wild. And what about the host cities themselves? That is different. Oh, it's a lot different. The only thing similar is the temperature. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we're we're a long ways from, from Homestead, but um, you know, definitely fun places and fan support really is what what sticks out to me and that's I think the reason why we're why we've brought the final four here is the fans. Um, you look at the amount of campers and the excitement at Phoenix every year and you know, sold out again right now, so um, the excitement level from the fans is why we're here, and uh, you know that's one thing we we can't separate from from racetracks. Does this year feel any similar, or I guess maybe different compared to 2017 when you won it? You know, the only thing difference is I think 2017 we were we were dominant throughout the year. We won a ton of races, and this year we've been just kind of you know really dominant on the 750 tracks, and you know kind of just hanging around there on the on the you know 550 tracks. So. Um, 
definitely not a dominant car. Like Larson is kind of who we were in 2017, right? Winning the most races. But I feel like we've won the right races when you look at Phoenix and being here in this championship race. So I think we got the edge. And then Denny had said that if himself or Kyle didn't win the championship, it'd kind of be a disappointment of the year. I'm curious how you felt about that and if it gives you more motivation to go out there and get it done. Uh, yeah, I mean, I I don't really care for either of those two to win. So uh, that, yeah, I'm hoping we do it. And, you know, I don't really care what they think. <laughs> Martin Truex is back to the Seat Nation. And, Mark, Martin, when, you, when I walk into a restaurant and I get in my favorite seat, it feels damn good. Yeah. Favorite meal. When you walk into a track like this that you've had success, is it better to run at a track that you're more comfortable with versus – a championship track at Homestead or another track that's like, oh, my God, I can't stand that track. Oh, well, no question. Anytime you're going to a place you've had success, especially this year, you're like licking your chops. Like, all right, yeah, this is good. This is real good. So I'm I'm feeling great about, you know, being able to win here this year, um, being that, that we've been so good on the 750 tracks, you know, winning at Richmond just in, uh, in the playoffs, which is probably the closest, most similar track to Phoenix. I'm feeling pretty good about things right now. A little bit about your success this year though because have you been playing with your fan base you you were great had a three win streak and then suddenly it was just kind of mediocre and was that to test things to get into the playoffs all you had to do is guarantee you got to phoenix where you've won is that was there a strategy going on this year that you're not telling us about not really i mean we weren't trying to stink up some of those races <laughs> we really weren't we were trying hard and it's just been kind of a weird year there's been a lot of comp you know competition out there in the racetrack and the 550 bigger tracks haven't been very good to us. Through the summer, we got a stretch of just crazy things happening with some of the road courses. We got some strategy things and flat tires and getting run into, which I'm over getting run into this year. But hopefully th <laughs> hopefully this weekend we can all keep it clean and uh, come home clean. But, um, no, we were testing a little bit, but nothing crazy. So it's just been one of those years up and down. What has been the explanation then for your, your dominance in the 750 horsepower track? It's a comfort level for me. It's what I really enjoy. I mean, I've I've really, you know, 2017, that's what we ran. And 2018, that's what we ran. And just I just have developed a comfort level for that low downforce and high horsepower. you got to really drive the car and you're sliding all the time. And it just fits my style. The 550 wide, hold the wide open stuff has just not been something I've been great at yet. I'm still learning, trying to get better at it. Um, so part of it's that. And then part of it's our cars, I think, are just better in that configuration. I think the 550 configuration for our Toyotas just hasn't been good and we haven't been able to make it work so um, it's a combination of things um, but I'm happy that it's here this weekend because it's a big deal and I feel like we can go out and win it. You talked a little bit earlier about how the fan base here in Phoenix is so great you love seeing all the campers out there you have a camper out there let's just say you're not a race car driver you're just partying having fun for the Phoenix finale the NASCAR Cup finale what's stocked in your fridge how is your place decorated tell us about the Martin <laughs> Truex camper as a fan. I mean, the only thing you need is steaks and beer, so <laughs> maybe brats. Stuff to grill and a cooler full of beer. That's all I need to go camping. Do you have Excedrin in your... I carry it in my... I carry it. I carry it in my backpack. <laughs> but that also leads me to something here. Denny Hamlin's a hothead. Kyle Busch is a hothead. We're all hothead to a degree. Yeah. And she's seen it being married to me for a few years. But I've learned to control it. I've not seen you go bonkers, man, to go nuclear on anybody. What the hell's going on? Can I have some of that uh, magic medicine that you got, Martin Truex? It's mind over matter. I get mad, too. Trust me, I get real mad a lot of times. And just, you know, it's like you said, you got to learn how to control it. You know, know when to hold them, know when to fold them. <laughs> <laughs> if cameras weren't on you 24-7, what you got in and out, out of that car, would we see a different Truex? Um, probably not. I mean, I'm pretty good at handling my emotions i mean i probably sometimes i just stuff them down inside and they take a while to come out and you know, i just bury them but for the most part i uh, i'm pretty good at controlling myself but if denny steals your steak it's game on bro yeah nobody steals my steak <laughs> <laughs> thanks man <laughs> thank you very much you're welcome guys appreciate it hey martin how's it going so, so how do, you, you've done this a few times now you, you've made the championship four. i have how was how does this feel different? Uh, it doesn't really feel that different. You know, it feels um, – I didn't make it last year, so I'm sure that was probably the most different feeling one than ever, you know. It feels kind of like we're getting back to normal. It's good to be here with everybody and talking about it. But um, 
I don't know. I feel I feel really confident. I don't know that I've I felt confident in other ones, but this one, I don't know. I just feel a little bit different, a little bit better, and a little bit more relaxed. I think the more you do this, the more relaxed you get about it, and the more you understand the situation and um, how to worry about what you can control and not the other outside noise. And I don't know, just feeling good. How much does that relaxed feeling have to do with like what you had to, to go through in the round of eight? Because it was not an easy <laughs> three races. Yeah, definitely a stress reliever after that to make it, you know, to be here. This is like, okay, this is nothing compared to, you know, 50, 60 laps ago in Martinsville <laughs> so, or, or the Roval or whatever. So, yeah, it's been a wild playoffs, and uh, we've been lucky to make it through for sure. But um, got a great team, got a great opportunity, and um, it's kind of like our year, you know. It's been like kind of just up and down, you know, like the last couple weeks. And then, boom, we'll just win a race, you know. So um, it's time to boom win a race this weekend. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, honestly, I really don't. It, it's sometimes these things just happen, and it's hard to put your finger on them. You know, just like our summer, how we had, you know, we went eight or nine weeks or ten weeks or whatever, something in there, just without finishing in the top five or leading the lap or just. We were fast enough to at times, you know, we were, it's not like we were making huge mistakes or beating ourselves that bad. It's just circumstances sometimes in racing, sometimes things go your way. Sometimes they don't, um, you know, last week in Martinsville, I think we, we had, that's a good example that we had a great day going. We get, you know, we get run into once or twice and we're out, you know, we go from a nice smooth day plus five, six, seven, whatever, scoring a good stage points, minding our own business. You know, we get pushed up into the marbles one time. Next thing you know, we're out and we we're in a bad spot. You know, we're, we got damaged and we're getting hit and we got to pass cars. Somehow we ended up fourth. So, I, I mean, it's just, it's racing, you know, things get crazy and sometimes things happen you can't control. Um, but I think the reason we're able to bounce back is because of the way we, we race, the, the team, our experience, our confidence, our work ethic, and the fact that we are capable of winning on every, any given weekend, any given track. Um, and so when it all comes together, we can win anywhere. Uh, I, I thought earlier when I said that um, I think it just it, it'll be a more even playing field for all of us. You know, I think it's still even this to the to this day, it's still easy to make a wrong assumption uh, on something and and have something in your car that uh, you can't get out without practice. You can't get in, you can't fix in the race. So um, I would say it'll be it should make it more competitive between the four of us. I think you'll see all four of us run well. I don't think you'll see one guy out to lunch, which potentially you could have if we didn't have practice. Martin, what does it mean to see this with James? You know, he took a lot of slack at first that he's not cold. Sure. Last year. Now, you guys ran well last year, but to be here, what do you think that means to him, or what does it mean for you to be here with him? Yeah, no, it's it's great for him. It's a great uh, confidence booster for him for, you know, going forward, but really just, um, you know, just kind of reward for all his hard work you know and his grit determination and what he's put into it he works so hard i mean no question hands down one of the hardest work people i've ever met and um you know so it's just a great reward for him to see that pay off and for our team to, for that all to pay off um to your point he did you know he took a lot of he had a lot of pressure he stepped in he had big shoes to fill you know you look at what cole did and what cole did for me and um you know, and James working beside him understood what he was taking over. You know, he knew that there was going to be high expectations. It's not like he, you know, just got surprised or whatever. Um, so just proud of him, you know, for his work and his hard work. And, um, you know, I'd love to give him a championship, his first one, hopefully not his last. Has his, has his preparation for this race been different than maybe what Cole would have no, I don't think so. I mean, as far as I could tell, it's as, you know, you pretty much can't get them out of the shop. You can't get, you can't get our guys, you know, they work till uh, 3.30 in the morning, Monday night. I mean, they just, the guys, the guys are, they're a beast, man. All of them. I got the best team. No question. They always go the extra mile. They put in so much extra effort. And um, I just, I really feel lucky to have that and appreciate it. And I know how far it goes because, you know, I know, uh, you know, a lot of what we've been able to do over the years has been because because of them going the extra mile, putting in the extra effort. And uh, James, all of them, they just, they, man, they're beasts. And the moment won't be too big for him because he's been here before. This just might be the first time as a crew chief. So you don't have to worry about that, you know, first time jitters with him in the 
Yeah, no, I don't think so. I mean, I think he understands it. You know, so far, like this week, talking to him, I was at the shop uh, yesterday. I think everything's great. I mean, he feels good. I know he's he's confident in, in this weekend and what we're doing. And, um, you know, we've got practice to iron it out, which I think kind of eases the pressure on the engineer and the crew chief more than anyone, you know, because they're the ones making the guesses and the assumptions and, you know, looking at the weather and saying, okay, we got to do this because of that. And there's 800 of those that they do every week that, they sit on pins and needles about, you know, waiting for the race to start to see how the car is going to be. So I think that probably eases everybody's mind a little bit more than normal, just having a little practice. No, I really don't think it is. I mean, I think at the end of the day, we obviously both want a Gibbs car to win. 11 and 19, obviously, we both want a Gibbs car to win, but we want it to be ours. I mean, let's be honest. We're, it's one, you know, we work together all week, <clears throat> show up at the racetrack, we'll work together through practice and qualifying. And, you know, Sunday morning, that's it. It's over. You know, it's, they'll talk pitch strategy during the race or whatever's happening, like they always do, I would say. But on the racetrack, we're racing. Like, there's no, there's no teamwork, you know. We're not helping each other. We're we're racing to win, um, and I'm sure the other teams the same way. Which that's just the way the sport is. It's every man for themselves. Uh, once Sunday rolls around. Do you feel like you kind of like slipped in unnoticed into the championship tour compared to the other guys? No, I don't think so. I mean, I don't know. I really don't care. I mean, I, those are the kind of things I don't really think about. And um, I mean, I, I feel like. Um, you know, we deserve to be here. We worked really, we worked really hard to get here, and and we have a really good opportunity ahead of us to uh, be able to win this thing. What What does it mean to be able to share being in the championship with Terry after kind of the year that she's had? Yeah, I mean, it's always um, it's always great to have her at the racetrack, and and you know, she's such a big part of what we do. She's a big force behind our team and behind me of you know working hard and. Um, never giving up on the racetrack and just, you know, kind of seeing things through till the end no matter what. So um, always good to have her here. Hopefully we'll, uh, you know, make her proud on Sunday. What, what do you think is the most important asset you have as a driver that will help you this weekend that maybe the other two drivers don't have? I think my ability just to stay, you know, stay focused in the moment, in the bad stuff. Um, you know, there's nothing I can't get through. Um, nothing's going to fluster me. Um, I don't ever give up. You know, if it comes out, if it comes down to we all have to grind it out, my money's on me.